So in this video, I'm going to talk about how I ink with a Hunts 102 Crow Quill. Uh, what's holding the Crow Quill is a Grifto Metal nail holder, and the ink I'm using is a Higgins Black Magic Indie ink. Uh, I, I find that ink uh, flows pretty well with uh, the Crow Quill. I also use a lot of different other inks with uh, different tools. I, I have Speedball ink, I also have Colinor Black Magic ink, and I'll, I'll switch it around. Different ink does a uh, different type of work. Uh, so without further ado, here's here's some of the video recording. Quill, I like feeding my quill. I'll use the dropper from the ink bottle and I'll fill the bottom side of the quill. That's the concave side and I'll add a little bit of the ink to the tip of the quill. I don't add any of the ink to the top of the quill. The reason for that is when I feed the ink on the bottom of the quill, it flows better. The ink flows better with the with the quill. Now, if you add ink to the top of the quill, none of that on the top is going to flow. And after a while, the top of the quill, it will dry up and then it will clog up your quill and then you're going to have to clean your quill. When I make a very rarely do I need to clean my quill because I'm only adding ink to the bottom of the quill. Now, as I make a note as I'm creating line weights, I'll add, I'll make some lines thicker and some lines thinner. And then I'll and I'll break up some of the lines as well. Now, as you can see, some of the characters in my other videos, I ink with a brush. The brush it gives me a nice, big, bold, thicker line. In this video, I decided to use the quill for the background, mainly because the background does a lot of finer details. You don't want to spend too much time playing with a brush to get that that fine line the quill will always give you a finer line and then you can also control the line weights with the quill when as an inker you should be able to use all the tools that at your disposal being able to use a brush a quill microns tech pens the more you're able to control the better your work will be uh, every tool you can do the same kind of work but certain tools you're more efficient than, a, than another tool now here, I'm making the background. The background here is like a marble weathered look. So as I'm inking these loopy lines, uh, I'm giving some lines a thicker weight and other areas I'll give it a thin, thinner weight. At the same time, I'm also breaking up the lines. That way I'm not inking one line all the way across. For example, when you're penciling, that pencil you're gonna get a dead line, like a flat dead line. If you want that line to be thicker, you're going to go back and draw another line on top of the pencils. With the quill, with this quill with that I'm using right here, when you press down harder, you're going to get a thick line. When you ease up on the pressure, you're going to get a thinner line. Here, I'm pressing up and down, up and down as I'm moving the pin left and right. Notice how I'm breaking up that little circle part. The reader who's looking at the artwork, their brain will automatically complete that circle. So it's not always okay to ink in every line with a dead line. You want to create an interesting look for the work. Now here, I'm again, I'm breaking up the line. I'm giving it some thicker lines, some thinner lines. I'm breaking up the lines. Right here, I'm adding more of that uh, texture feeling on the background. Now, you look at the top of the page, the page I'm inking off the page. If you, as you've seen in some of my other videos, I often ink off the page, therefore creating more art than what was drawn in originally. Like right there, I'm just adding, adding more uh, inked artwork on top. The reason for this is after the artwork is done and you're scanning this in Photoshop, you want to have more crop area than not enough. If you, okay, right here, this is the second time I'm feeding the, the quill. So throughout this whole page, I'm only feeding the quill a few times. Like I mentioned before, if you dip the ink, you don't really know how much ink in there. Too much ink will cause the ink to bleed sometimes. Too little ink, and you're gonna find yourself dipping ink over and over again just to get the quill, quill, ink, quill working. When I'm feeding ink, I know exactly how much ink is on the quill and I can gauge roughly when I'll be running out of uh, ink. Here I'm making these lines thick, thin, thick, and right about here, 
the quill wasn't working. So I do a quick spot check. I'll turn the quill over to the bottom side to make sure there's ink. I see that there's ink and it's okay. Then I'll continue inking it. Most times when the quill's not working, it's because the quill's not working. It's not because it's out of ink. It's because you're holding it in a different angle. After using a quill for a while, you kind of understand what angle works best for the quill, and then you can go control the quill really well. Here, adding most of the more of the texture again, some bloopy thicker lines, and then at this point, I'm going by feel, making sure everything is consistent. You sometimes a penciler will add in every line. I'll add more lines, and then just make sure the whole feel is consistent everywhere everywhere you don't want to have this texture to be more in one area and not enough in a certain area you want everything to be somewhat equal okay inking more and inking off the page more of that marbled weather texture on the background just adding more off the trim line it's better to have more than that enough. Right about here, I ran out of ink. See, I see that there's no more ink. And then with my left hand, I'll go grab the bottle of ink with the ink dropper. And right when I feed it, check out how, how I'm feeding it. I slowed down this video for a reason. I'll put the dropper directly on the tip and I'll squeeze the dropper. That little bit of ink is going to engorge. And I know exactly how much. I'm not putting down too much ink. And then I'm not putting down not enough ink. This is enough to, to last for quite a few minutes for, for inking. When you're dropping the ink there, it may be too much or too little. When I'm feeding it, when I'm holding the tip of the dropper and I'm feeding the quill, I can control exactly how much ink is on the quill to make sure that it's consistently working. Some artists, they like to dip the whole quill into the bottle of ink and then the SS ink they'll flick it on, on another piece of paper that that's a lot of time that's extra time that I think that you need to be flicking the pin I'd rather just pick up the dropper and just feed the quill and know exactly how much is in there right here I'm adding more of the textured background so after a while of using quill you begin to understand how everything works with the quill what angle works best with the quill how much ink you want to feed it what type of ink you want to feed uh, in this video i'm using a speedball in the ink you can also use black magic and colonel ink some ink works better than others thanks for watching this video now if you have any questions or comments comment down below and i'll respond to them and don't forget to like and if you have any questions post them and then I'll probably make a video in the future answering those questions. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching this video. And until next time, have a good inking day.